I love nothing more than when cars become a real part of the family. And in the instance of this episode, the car that's in that shed at the end of the garden has been with this family since it was new. And it's a Citroen, a people's car, a 2CV, the ultimate character car, some people would say. So obviously what we're going to do is we're going to go and see it, find the backstory out about it, and hopefully, hopefully, get it running. I'm Johnny Smith. This is, of course, a barn fine episode of The Late Break Show, proudly supported by carandclassic.com. The biggest marketplace in Europe for classic cars, with over 35,000 vehicles on sale via online auction and classifieds. This is John. Now, John, you got in touch with, with me to say, Mum and Dad have got this car, they've had it since it was new, and it's all I remember. Would you like to come and see it? And I saw it and I was like, I've got to. I've hardly ever featured two CVs on the show. And it's obviously quite a um, sentimental car, hence why it still lives with you guys. So what's, what's the brief backstory on it then? Um, well, we, we had it since 1985. Um, remember picking it up from the garage new. Um, do you? Yeah. How yeah. old were you then? Uh, seven. Wow. Seven, yeah. So I do remember picking it up. And then we just basically spent our whole childhood, really, as our, as our main car going around Norfolk. Dad used it for work. Um, I learned to drive in it. Wow. Um, so did my sister and brother. So, so yeah. seven, you guys went to school in it? Yep. You learned to drive in it. So all through your teen years, yep. your secondary school years. Yeah. Oh my gosh, and why has why he still got it? I think he's, um, he can never quite get rid of it. He, yeah. I think he still wants to, for it to run again. Yeah. So I think hopefully this will make him make that decision. We couldn't persuade him to come on camera. No. But when we turned up this morning, and hopefully he, we might get him to record some voice, he said, my plan was to get it back on the road when I retired and go for a tour of France in it. Yes. But you were saying that you used to help him maintain it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it could be in reasonable order, you think? He was quite good at maintaining Yeah, he used to wax oil it, change the oil, yeah. take the wings off, you know, things like that. So I'm hoping it's going to be fairly good condition. Yeah. And he's still got all the documents, so we'll have a look at all of those. Yes. But before we uh, open up the doors and have a look, I think we should just get rid of the greenhouse with no <laughs> windows. So I reckon if we walk the greenhouse frame somewhere that way, what do you reckon? Is this yeah, a two-man lift or is this more than two? No, it should be okay. Oh, it's all right. Not too bad. Hang on, is it? Oh, no, it's not attached to that tree. <laughs> That's good. Attached. This is um, one of these early prototype Citroen convertibles. <laughs> it's called a conservatoire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's stick it here. Next to the, um, the Greyhound. The Greyhound, with yeah. it Statue. As usual on these uh, episodes, I haven't seen the car yet. I've just seen a couple of photos. Uh, we do know that, I think your dad said that one of the doors is a bit seized. Yes. And this is a late model 2CV, right? 1985. Yeah, there wasn't many, many years left in it. No. I think, I think they went up to about 189, didn't they? Yeah. 87, somewhere around there. But it's a French made car. <clears throat> one of the last, yeah, French made cars. Brilliant. Yeah. Come on, let's have a look, let's have a look. Oh yeah, this is the door this that's the is door. Rotted, it's rotted off, can you see? Oh, I can't that. Oh no, we're gonna get, we're gonna get stuff falling on it. Hang on. Recycle. This might be the dodge. Oh, it's, it's, you've got it covered up. I didn't realise you had a cloth over it. <laughs> That's good. <clears throat> Try to keep it. Yeah. Early clean. Right. So there's always, there's always. <laughs> look at that. Look at that. It's even got the, Oh yeah, the little pump off, on often, it, yeah. Often lost or discarded. Might need that later. You might need that for those tyres, yeah. Because that's the thing about two CVs. I think they've still got the thinnest production car tyres. Yeah, one, one two, two fives. fives. One two fives, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, it's probably thicker than more thinner than that. It's about yeah. the same as that. Same size as that, yeah. Yeah. You can see, look, look at this, it's all sort of really threadbare. But oh, Got a bolt. A bit of curtain. A bit of curtain rail. We'll have to take this stuff off the roof, but oh gosh, it's all falling down. Do you know what? This actually looks pretty good. So there's the original garage. Yeah. Yeah, that's where they got it from. Yeah, and, Fleming's and, in Hunstanton. And he's got the bill of sale, your dad, hasn't he? The yes, original yep. bill of sale, which we'll, we'll look at in a minute. So all the paperwork. So this is the era when they were sort of trying to phase out the 2CV, but, and I'll, 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 I'll bring on my 2CV expert that I brought along for today. But people just kept buying it because I think it was one of the cheapest cars in Britain still. So therefore it was like, people who bought them in the 60s bought them in the 70s and were still buying them in the 80s so they're like well we've tried to kind of phase it out a bit like with the beetle they tried to phase the beetle out when the golf came in but people were still buying the beetle so they're like oh okay we'll keep selling it for a while before we pump the tires up i just wanted to show you so this is the state in which your dad's left the engine bay which i don't i don't know why it's like this but it wasn't broken is it wasn't, no, no, it was put in here because he got a new job, so they gave him a company car. Oh. Um, so basically he just put it in here after that. So it, it, still, it was still running when he got it in here. Right, okay, okay. So he, he used to do a lot of miles in this? Yes, yeah, with his old job, he used to drive around Norfolk. So was, I think it's done 145,000 miles. Which is an awful lot for a 2CV, yeah. I would say. Yeah, and never had any problems with the engine, so. That's brilliant. So, um, so and I think it's probably a perfect Norfolk car. What yes. with it having no torque, uh, but it, there's not many hills here, is it? Although there is one hill. There's one you... hill, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that always used to be its nemesis, but yeah. Oh, it? <laughs> yeah, I didn't like it. So what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll get the tyres up, we'll, we'll, we'll push it out into the light and we'll, we'll wheel in my friend Darren, um, the 2CB guru. But I think first impressions, there's only little tiny scabs on the car. And like, you know, rust bleeding. There's not rock that I can see. No. And that might have been the, the might have paid off with you and your dad drowning it in wax oil and grease. Yes. I yeah, really we used to do that a lot, yeah. And I also, I've suddenly fallen in love with this box because what a fantastic old school television box that, that this is. That is brilliant. It's got a date label on the side, 16th of December, 1985. 85, hang on, isn't this an 85 car? Yes, yeah. So, <laughs> Period, correct television. <laughs> if I can, I always get an adult to help me on barn finds uh, who usually knows something about the car. Because this is a 2CV, I've brought Darren along from the 2CV shop. 2CV shop is the biggest purveyor of 2CV bits in this country, I would say. It certainly is, is yes, it? yeah. And he's also a friend of mine. Um, if you haven't, in fact, watched uh, where I reviewed the electric converted 2CV, which Darren is part of, I'll put a link above my head right now. But this particular car, I thought I'd call you and see if you wanted to come along because I had a hunch it'd be a bit of a time capsule. It, it certainly is. I think being in this garage, watertight, it's, it's, done, it's, it's, done, it's, it's done it really well, done it proud. Right, well, we found a couple of newspapers darted around and they are bone dry. So it's had plenty of draft. They've wax sawed it since it was pretty much new. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting out and get, I'm, I'm, look, I'm look, looking underneath and seeing what, yeah. how good it actually is. The only bit that scares me actually is, you don't know if you can see it on camera, but there is mouse poo all round. This is what these holes in the curtains is. Yeah, the worst they do is just eat the interior. Yeah. And maybe the odd bit of a wiring loom. Now, a wiring loom on a 2CV is not a complicated thing, right? <laughs> no, it's not, no, 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 it's not. Just to double check. You don't actually need one, do you? Come on. <laughs> so, for for like the for people like me who don't know a huge amount about two CVs, I'm not an oracle on it. So this is an '85 car, I think. It's. Yeah. So is that late French? Yeah, they made them into in France into a roughly F Reg G Reg. Okay. What's um, 88? Yeah, but but they moved to Portugal for a very short period of time before they closed the factory and stopped production. Okay. Um, this is a, a this was built in Paris. Yeah. Um, it's. The the disc brake model, the, the disc brake model. So it's, it, to me, is the eighties was the the time when they was really popular. People was having most their daily drivers. Yeah, that's a gentleman who's bought this car. That was his daily car. It was. Yeah, hundred and thirty or hundred and forty thousand miles. Yeah, he did thirty thousand miles a year in it. 
Yeah, no. It's a lot of miles. It is, but back then, it was that's what you had, and you and, and they're capable of doing it. Yeah. You know, people ring me up now and say, "Oh, I, I've got, I bought this two CV. Can I use it daily? It was designed to be used daily. Yeah. So yeah, you can still use it now. Yeah. Crack on, you know. Yeah. It's, well, I'm hoping that when we when we when we have a route around, it'll be it'll be half decent and um, everything. I think it will. I do as well. Yeah. I get a lot of people watching Barn Finds saying, Johnny, I can't believe you haven't got an electric compressor. Well, I've had them and they've all ended up in the bin because they've been unreliable and annoying or I haven't had a decent power source or a long enough cable, blah, blah, blah. And in the instance of this thing today, I think I can handle a 125 tyre. Don't think it requires that much air. Got me matching trusty Michelin pump. We'll be fine, we'll be fine. Right, well me and John have just pumped the tires up and they've all stayed up, despite being seriously cracked. I can't hear any hissing. So the moment of truth is, luckily your dad didn't leave the handbrake on. Yes. So I yep. think it, it will freely wheel out into the open for the first time since the millennium. Since the millennium, yeah. Oh my gosh, it's time for Bluebell to see the sun. The car's name is Bluebell. Shall we? Yep, we're all right my way. Is that okay? Yeah. Reckon we'll leave it there for a sec. Oh. See, that, that's the only bit that scares me is the mouse poo. Yeah. Just before we turn the camera on after wheeling it out, he was under it already with your phone light. And your screwdriver, and giving your it screwdriver. a poke. So what's your, what's your initial kind of verdict on the condition? Um, the body shell, because obviously it's a, a body on chassis. Yeah. The, the body shell is good. All the floors and seals are good. Um, might be a little bit of work on the driver's side, but I mean, very little. And the boot floor is good. The real seat belt anchorage always goes rusty. There's not a sign of it. Really? Yeah, no, it is really good. The gentleman that owned it, cavity wax injected it, and that's... I saved it. Yeah, saved it. The chassis is good, but the seams are starting to go. Okay. And like I said to you earlier, Chassis is a bit like a, a bit like an iceberg. What you see on the outside is seven times worse on the inside. Right. Um, so they'll be good for a while. Yeah, yeah. I I believe um, if you get up to MOT, yeah, I think it'll pass. Yeah, it's just, just the chassis will probably last a, a few more years. I know that it sounds serious replacement chassis, but it's sort of par for the course on old two CVs. Yeah, you, <coughs> it's very hard to very <coughs> rare, sorry, to find a car this age with, on its original chassis. Most of, most of them has been replaced, and now, like we sell a galvanized chassis, what's made in the license from Citroen is a Citroen part, wow. and that's guaranteed for life. We have seen evidence of, of mice living under the bonnet. Yeah. So if we just, do we take these away, and there's obviously a piece of plastic covering the top of the engine. But I want to know, so that's where mice have lived. Yeah, and he's making a nest out of the uh, bonnet oh, pad. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that as well. So what's up? That's just the air Hello. supply. No, he's not in there. There's a lot of... Oh, man. <laughs> oh, that's crap, isn't it? That's, real, that's actual... Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we want that. Yeah, It'll that. be soaked in urine, Darren. But, You'll be uh, right. I'll just put it over there. Um, yeah, no. and I haven't looked at the engine yet, but I've, I've, I'm very confident it'll... it'll because it's, it was stored in a very dry garage, and yeah. also it's got the carb to the air filter duct on, no water's got inside. Yeah, I think she'll run. Tell me about two CV engine specs. So this is the very last of the engines, <coughs> right? This is the big block. This is the uh... don't call it a big block. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is they done a three seven five, four two five, four three five, and a six o two. Six o two came out in the sort of seven uh, late sixties. Um, 602. Yeah, 602 cc. Big block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It had, it had the about, about 28, 29 brake horsepower. Did it? Yeah, they'll do. They're designed to be driven hard. So okay. you can drive these, and I've done it on the motorway to the south of France, flat out, and they'll thank you for it. Really? Yeah, yeah. They, they, they. If they, I always said to my customers, if they, if it cannot do it, there's something wrong with it. Right. And. Now the, the engines are basically bulletproof. 
So as long as you do the things that, that these guys have done, which is regularly change the oil yes. and, and all the other preventative. And, yeah, and good maintenance. Um, cause you can get I've never worked on a 2CV engine, but it's, it's fascinating the way you've got the coil right at the front. Yeah. Obviously air cooled, no water radiators or anything, so you've just got the big fan there. Is that driven by the crank? Yeah, the points are behind the fan. Um, most people these days fit electronic ignition. Yeah. Um, yeah, the fuel pumps in there, what we'll definitely need repla replacing. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, and the, the coil has got like a wasted spark. Yeah. So there's no distributor. It's just simple. If you don't need it, why have it? Yes. Um, it's so good. And that is how the heater works. Blows air through, over, over the engine to cool it, up through the heat exchangers. Yeah. As it dumps it out the wing in the summer or puts it into the car. Brilliant. And this here is, we believe, a scratch built adaptation for the battery tray or the, battery box? This is the original one. Yeah. Um, but the gentleman's had this one made. Um, it's more I, substantial. Yeah, to, to, I think you had a different battery in it at some time. Probably a better, like a heavier cranking amp yeah. battery. Right. Okay, well, I think maybe we'll take the plugs out just to squirt a little bit of oil down. Yeah, yeah. Just to make sure it's a bit of a lube. We'll, 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 see, if, we'll see if she turns over as well. Yeah. I'm very confident she will. You are, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get it going. This is lovely. We haven't even looked at any of the brochures yet or any of the service <laughs> issues. There's some loads of it in there. <laughs> does this feel strangely familiar? It does, yes. Yeah, even though I haven't been in here for 20 years. Because you learned to drive in this, your brother learned to drive in it, your sister. Yeah, yeah, we all learned to drive in it. And did you drive it before you were 17? No. No. No, my dad used to let me change gear and stuff like that. Really? It's obviously a really odd gear stick. Yeah, so learning to drive in this and then going to a normal car, yeah. was that yeah. a bit odd? Yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. because there's nothing really... Similarities, the pedals and the steering wheel, but yeah. even the yeah. handbrake's odd, going, being down it's, there. Did you have to twist it and drop it? Or no, is you it, just sort of pull it, that button in the and button push in, it out, yeah. and then pull it in, yeah. Flat floor car Flat as well, floor, so yeah. much room. Yeah, limited buttons on the dash. I know, well, pretty much not a lot going on, but that was... The, it's, it's actually all right, I mean, it... It, it needs a bit of a clean. You said the driver's seat is a bit squishy. Yes, a bit, it's, yes the springs are gone, I think, innit? And these blooming windows. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's great, isn't it? Yeah. I, yeah think it's it's, I, think, I think what your dad has done, and what you've done, has preserved it really well. Yeah. Yeah, I think what we've done on it has helped it, hasn't it, with the wax oil and... Mm. Yeah. It's not wet. No. It's not, it's not mouldy. And it's, it's surprisingly good, actually. It never ceases to amaze me what, what, what little is in here. Is that, a grab, is that the passenger grab handle? Yes. Is that it? I think that is it, yeah. It's just a piece of vinyl. Yeah. My word. It's like the felt on the side, just stuck onto the... It is just stuck on, isn't it? And this, yeah, look, this the tube, lining. the yeah. bent tube, is, is that is the main structure of the car. Yeah. There's just nothing going on, is there? No. But yeah, it's got so much character. And the air conditioning that we see out the yeah, front Yeah, with here. the Land Rover style vents. It is, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's so cool. It's so cool. I want to have a look at this. Um, I want to have a look at the original uh, bit of sale. Yes. Because your dad's kept look, what looks like everything. Yeah, I think he has, yeah. yeah. He just liked to keep all the detail. And he made a record of every oil change he'd done. Yes. Yeah. Which he, he did, did meticulously. Yeah, every 3,000 miles. It's yeah. brilliant. Yeah, he did that himself. So what is it showing? 44,316. Yeah, so it's done 144,316. Yeah. yeah, but it stopped doing those miles at the end of 1999, Yeah, we yes. think. Yeah, so it probably did those in 14 years. Which is a lot. Which is a lot. Good job you live in a flat area. <laughs> yeah, so I have never worked on a 2CV before. I don't oh. know why. Well, I've got friends with them. Nice and simple, that's what they are. Yeah. They're very up front. I think yes. that's why I forgot about all the engines here. Are not nothing's really here. You got the gearbox that link. Yeah, there. that there is the engine. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's your crumple zone. Yes, it is. Yes. It's your, it's your, and one person can lift the engine out. Really? I've done it on the hard shoulder of a uh, Luxembourg motorway. My my clutch went on my car once. <laughs> really? Yes. So that came out really easily. Mm, that's one plug. That's one plug. Sooty. But there, it'll probably clean up just fine. Brilliant. Let's, let's, let's pop this one in. See, it says 602 on there, just yeah. to proudly proclaim. Yeah. It's almost like the a big horses. I'll swap. So you said about 28 horsepower? Yeah, from factory, yeah. And of course, inboard discs. Yeah. 
It's a really neat package. Gear linkage that just looks like it's been bodged to get you home, but that's it. That is how it should be. Inboard discs really hugging the block or the flywheel, the bell housing. Starter motor is extremely accessible. What's that like? Same. Not bad considering. Yeah, it's sooty. I might just put a new pair in just to. Well, I'll squirt a little bit of yep. oil down those boreholes. And then we'll see if we can turn it over. Yeah, and we'll turn it over without the plugs in. And then, if it feels fine, we'll put the new plugs in and that's that ticked off. We'll see if we've got a spark. I can't get my trusty oil can in. So I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is just squirt oil down. This may or may not work. Theoretically, it should. Get some in the, uh, that's it. I'll probably spill a bit onto the, um, the barrels. Oh, hey, that gosh. Works. You git. Hey, we got wipers. Brilliant wipers, good. So but no starting. No starting. That's just that that solenoid. I can see it. Can do, you see do it? Do you want get, something to tap it with? It's moving in and out, look. Yeah, or we can put it in first gear and rock it around or just give it a knock. Citroen wrench number two. So do you uh where, where do you tend to tap? Let's just give it a tap, see what just happens. Look at that. There we go. Okay. I do think the starter motor is... Slow. Let's check the connections to the starter, actually. We might need dressing up. We could disconnect the battery and we could just dress those up. What I like about this is not that it's a box that had a toaster in it, it's that it's full of interesting documents about this car's life. That one in particular. So that is when your dad ordered it new. Yes. How much was it? 3,049. 3,049 quid, so 2,651 quid plus VAT at 15%. And you had seat belts fitted at the rear because children. Yes. Yeah. South End Road, Hunstown to Norfolk, which I'm pretty sure is on the number plate on the back. Yeah, so I remember yeah, still got still the original, yeah. which is so cool. And then what have you got here? I know you've got... These are all the service invoices. And then it's uh, my dad made a note of every time he changed the oil. That's great. Change the oil and oil filter. Yeah, yeah. And then, even better, the original maintenance guide, which I was, uh, which I think has still got all the little slips. Look, all these little service yeah. slips here, which give you an idea of, yeah. and the owner's manual, which is ace. Yeah. Your dad kept everything. He did, yeah. <laughs> So this is great, look, this is the tech spec. This is, th these are promotional brochures. And there were a lot of Tintin ones. You can see these are, and the tech spec on the back, right? Get this for tech spec. So, curb weight, 585 kilos. Just over half a ton. 29 horsepower, 29 pounds feet of torque. Nought to 62, not applicable. It just says not applicable. Yeah, I'm and, sure it can get to that. And a standing yeah. kilometre, 1,000 metres, in seconds, 44 and a half seconds. <laughs> Brilliant. 
Just maximum speed, speed 71, 71 and a half. Yeah. Did you ever get 71? I think I did, yeah. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just stopped. Well, not that time with Dad, that. But yeah. That will be absolutely nailing one of these. <laughs> yeah. There's even, look, October 83, Citroen brochure. He was obviously shopping around before he bought it in 85. That's ace. Yeah. Citroen Visa convertible. I know it's not a 2CV, but it was in the range in 83. That's a car nobody bought. Everything from 2CV right down to the CX, which I love. 40th anniversary. And another price list. It's good stuff. That's 1983, that 1983, yeah. but you didn't have a Citroen before that? No. This was the, the first the Citroen? First Citroen, yeah, first and only Citroen. First and only Citroen, yeah. but why, why buy another? Because yeah, exactly. you've still got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's still here. Nearly 38 years ago. Yeah, and this was not the kind of car that was built to last. No. You know, they were quite a agricultural thing, weren't they? They were yeah, cheap. They were. they were basic. They were quite flimsy in places. But yet, actually, I think it's... I will call this a survivor because I think it is. I think it's a real survivor. It's brilliant. So we thought there was a problem when you attach the starter motor onto the new battery, plugs are out, so theoretically no compression, and yet it still felt like it was under tension. It should spin over really quick and it wasn't. It sounded like a, a broken starter motor, but it's yeah. brand new, so it's not. Coupled with the fact that when Darren was fiddling around with where the points should go, putting um, electronic ignition conversion in it, when you were trying to get top dead center by turning the, yep. the crank crank, you basically couldn't. No, I could not turn it at all. So we were like, well, what on earth could that be? What's fouling it? We thought, well, maybe it's maybe the, the rings and the pistons are tight yeah. in the bores. We'd already oiled them, but maybe we need to throw a bit more oil in. We've thrown a load more oil in, and now we've pushed it to and fro a bit to try and relieve it, and it is feeling like it's, yeah. it's easing up. Put it in second, push it backwards and forwards for several miles and see what happens. And it's now chuffing like a, like a train, whereas before it wasn't. Can you hear it? It does actually feel a lot smoother. So here we go. <coughs> okay. So on a car of this kind of mileage, being a two-cylinder car, 140,000 miles is a lot of miles. So if you were gonna, if you were going to put it on the road again long term, you probably want to change the piston rings anyway, precautionary me measure. But We've now, we've ladled a load of oil down there. You can see it's fired oil out yep. up the side there. I'm pretty confident it should feel very yeah. different. When you I'll, put... I'll set the electronic ignition up and then we'll turn it over without the spark plugs in. And it should do Yeah, to get any more out and then put them back in, hopefully, she'll come to life. Yeah, and then we should hopefully have a spark. Yeah, but yeah, hopefully. But we haven't done, because I bet that condenser's wanked, yeah, yeah. to use a technical term. Just turning the flywheel round by hand, you can feel it's nice and, it's nice and easy now, right? And I'm putting a peg into a hole to get top dead centre for the ignition. It should fall into this peg, this hole in a sec, as Darren turns it round. Here it comes out, Johnny. Okay. We're going to drill bit. The pin. Ah, there we go. There Is we go. In? Yeah, that's it. All clear. Is it out? There's a fly, flywheel's turning, isn't it? That's a free. Yeah. Yeah. We've got a spark. Got a spark. The engine's free. New plugs are in, new starter motor, new electronic ignition. Let's try it then. Are you ready? Yeah, I am ready. I'm eager. Do I take that pipe off? Yeah. Because there's, there's really no to fill it up, really. Do you want me to put my hand over it to give it a bit of... Um... You could try. I ain't gonna hurt, is it? Is it sucking? Hang on, hang on. 
I've got a plug lead off. Oh, you map it. Well, I put it on this end. I didn't know it was off on this end. I've just, I've just looked at it and gone, that's, that's not supposed... What about that there? Is that supposed to be off? That's from the all points. Right, okay. Just checking. All right. Yeah. No. <laughs> Give the starter a rest. Give the starter a rest. Oh. Oh. Can you give it a rest? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to boil the starter. Yeah, it's not a starter so much as your leads. Mm. <laughs> We've got a fire then, an attempted fire. Oh, was it? Well, you heard oh, it. Oh, yeah, sorry, I thought you meant the fire came out. Yeah, not an actual, like, yeah, fire yeah, fire. Yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not running. I'm covered in petrol, so I hope, <laughs> hopefully not. Um, all right. Yeah. We might need to dry the plugs one more time because we had to put quite a lot of oil down the bores in order to free it up to this point. So it was a necessary thing. Go on, then. Now, do we put a bit more fuel down it or not? I'm too scared in case. Is, is there any dribble coming out the bottom of the manifold? Um, no, I don't think there is any more dribbling. I could give it the tiniest of sips. Yeah, I would. He... Readers, listeners, viewers, this is just as the raspberry jam, just so you know. Right, will it, won't it? Place your bets. Yes. Good, that's the spirit, John. Oh. Yeah. There she goes. <laughs> wow. Yeah, she sounds sweet. Just, yeah, just let it settle, I reckon. Yeah, that's the... Uh... Yeah! It's going to run out of fuel in a minute. That sounds lovely. There you go. Bit of smoke, that'll be the oil that we put down it. That sounds really nice. Yeah, it does sound sweet, doesn't it? We finally got it, got it going, well done. Should I put a bit more down its mouth? Well, you, you want to put it down that pipe if you can, get your... All right. Johnny a matic feeder. Now it might bog down when I do this, will it? Or not? No. A bit more. That do. Yeah. Listen to that. She lives. What was really good is the fact that we actually got it running in the end. I didn't think we would at first. And this is a car I think is going to stay in the family. It's going to stay in the family for life. It's been here all this time and it's very well preserved. The next time you see this, it will be driving on the road, possibly doing a tour of France, who can say. Anyway, thanks ever so much for watching this episode, this barn fine episode of The Late Break Show. If you know of a car that's in a lovely old garage like this, in a real barn, in a hedge, on a driveway, and you think it's of interest for me to come and visit, let me know in the description below there are contact details. There's also a link for our eShop. We have a Late Break Show merch shop. Go and have a look. You might want to buy something. Thanks for watching.